I have said before, the United States embodies a new Romanism, plundering the world and using the plundered resources to sustain its citizens' high welfare and sense of superiority. This can be seen from one simple fact. The US population makes up six of the world, yet consumes 35 of global resources. The difference is, the ancient Rome plundered with its armies, while the America uses a combination of military, financial capital, and media capital for its plunder. The collapse of ancient Rome ultimately stemmed from two words, unequal distribution. Roman citizens went to fight wars, only to return home and find their lands had been annexed by the aristocracy. Their families were displaced, left without food or shelter. Over time, the entire empire lost its drive for external expansion. How did Rome's vested interests deal with this problem? They did not seek reform. Instead, they killed the Gracchi brothers, who sought to break monopolies and implement reforms. The Gracchi brothers referred to Tiberius Gracchus and Gaius Gracchus, famous second century. You see, your Roman politicians and leaders of the plebeian movement. They were elected tribunes of the plebs in 133 BC and 123 BC, respectively, and during their terms, each later reform movement, later known as the Gracchi reforms. Unfortunately, the reforms of the Gracchi brothers clashed with the vested interests of Rome's elites, and ultimately led to their assassinations during their respective tenures. After the Gracchi brothers were eliminated. Rome's ruling class, controlling the machinery of state, shifted to relying on mercenaries for external conquests and plundering. This model extended the empire's glory for a time. It did not address the root of the problem, but it did not solve the fundamental problem. Mercenaries, unlike Roman citizens, felt no allegiance to the empire. They simply worked for pay, and their loyalty was to their employer, not the state. Ultimately, the Roman Empire collapsed in this way. Does this history feel somewhat familiar? If it does, that's because it should. At its core, America can be seen as a modern version of Rome, while their methods of external expansion and plunder differ. The essence remains the same. The Democratic Party is akin to the new Roman aristocracy, with the top ten of elites, controlling nearly eighty of the nation's resources. Meanwhile. The bottom fifty of the population holds less than ten. This sense of deprivation among the populace <laughs> is growing ever more intense. This is evident in a single statistic. Over the past few decades, the median income of Americans has hardly changed. However, when adjusted for inflation, in reality, the income of ordinary Americans has declined significantly over the years. In the past. A blue-collar worker in the U.S. could hold a single job and support a middle-class family with dignity, but now, even with both spouses working hard, they still find themselves struggling to make ends meet. Many Americans are forced to take on two or three jobs just to barely sustain their livelihoods. In stark contrast, is the extravagance of America's elite class, from the debauchery. Of Lolita, to P. Diddy, S. Bazaar parties, and Abercrombie Fitch's former CEO Jeffries, male model feast. These individuals accumulate wealth at an unimaginable pace, and live lives of extreme indulgence. Their lifestyles have reached the absurd point of creating a figurative reproductive barrier with the lower classes. This is precisely why Trump's rise to power was inevitable. Looking at Trump's appointments. My sole impression is, he wants a revolution. He wants to be the Gracchi of the new Roman Empire. This kind of smashing of the old system, and reckless antagonizing of vested interest groups, can indeed be called a revolution. Trump, at his advanced stage, still possesses such ambition and determination. Honestly, I find this old man's persistence to be quite admirable. However. Can't Rump truly succeed? Or to put it another way, even if destiny has chosen him for this great mission, a presidential term is but a brief for years. 
What can Trump accomplish in just four years? Will the old aristocracy of the new Rome allow themselves to sit idly by and let Trump overthrow their rule? Will America's violent machinery, tightly controlled by the entrenched interests of the old aristocracy, obediently heed Trump's commands? Between Wall Street's old money in Silicon Valley is new money, who will ultimately emerge victorious? Will the emerging aristocracy of the new Roman Empire ah, truly fight for the common people? Or will the people, in the end, simply become pawns in their power struggles? He used to negotiate with the old elites. This cohesion, fueled by the stoking of far-right populism, how long can it truly last? As the wheels of history grind over the old order once more, Trump's Grotti-style revolution will eventually face its verdict. Will he be the plasterer of the new Roman Empire, hatching over its cracks while failing to address its deeper rot? Or will he become its grave deer, wielding his disruptive force to toll the death knell for the elite's dominance, ultimately hastening the collapse of the entire system? Regardless of the answer, Trump's role is but a single act in the grand drama of history. The true determinants of the new Rome's fate may lie in the hands of the dispossessed and the oppressed, whether they can break free from the shackles of historical repetition and bring this high-stakes gamble to an end. History offers no answers, but time will deliver its judgment.